Then finally in part H, first you need to advise Sweet Treats whether the company should continue purchasing chocolate chips from the external supplier or rather manufacture them internally. Assume that there are no selling costs on internal transfers. Then after that you need to recommend the optimal production plan for the candy division. Then next you need to discuss and calculate the external purchase price of chocolate chips at which your advice in part H1 will change. And lastly, discuss three non-financial factors that Sweet Treats should consider before deciding whether or not to manufacture the chocolate chips internally. Then there's one mark available for communication skills and that is awarded for logical argument. Alright, so first we need to advise Sweet Treats whether the company should continue purchasing the chocolate chips from the external supplier or rather manufacture them internally. So we are looking at a make or buy decision. So remember guys, when we are looking at a make or buy decision, we are going to compare the cost to buy to the cost to make. So that's the starting point in our calculation over here. Alright, so if we go back to the information provided in the scenario, we know that chocolate chips are currently purchased from an external supplier and we know that the standard price is 200 Rand per kilogram. However, we were also told that due to inflationary pressures, the cost of chocolate chips increased at a rate higher than management predicted when the standards were set. So during the year, they actually ended up paying 202 Rand per kilogram for the chocolate chips. Now remember guys, when you're making a decision, we're making a decision about the future, not the past. In the past, they have been purchasing the chocolate chips from the external supplier. We are now trying to decide for the future what is better for sweet treats. Should they rather make these chocolate chips internally or should they buy them from the external supplier? So obviously when you are performing this calculation, you should use the most up-to-date information in the calculation because you are making a decision about the future. So the cost to buy the chocolate chips from the external supplier is 202 Rand per kilogram. Alright, and we need to compare that to the cost to manufacture the chocolate chips internally. And we need these calculations to be comparable. So when we are calculating the cost to manufacture the chocolate chips internally, we should also be looking at the cost per kilogram. Alright, so let's just read through this paragraph again over here. Chocolate chips are currently purchased from an external supplier. The candy division could manufacture chocolate chips. One kilogram of chocolate chips would require one kilogram of milk chocolate, 0 0.5 direct labor hours, one machine hour. The chocolate chips would be packaged in 10 kilogram unbranded plastic bags, which cost 50 Rand each. All right, so that's what they need in order to make one kilogram of chocolate chips. So remember guys, this would be made by the candy division, so we need to look at all of the costs in the candy division. So first we need one kilogram of milk chocolate. So if we go to the candy division, we know that milk chocolate costs 120 Rand per kilogram. So 
So it's 120 rand per kilogram. And in order to make one kilogram of chocolate chips, they need one kilogram of milk chocolate. So that gives us a cost there of 120 rand. The only ingredient used to make chocolate chips is milk chocolate. So they won't be using any candy or any honeycomb. Then for packaging, we were given specific information relating to the packaging of chocolate chips. The chocolate chips would be packaged in 10 kilogram unbranded plastic bags which cost 50 rand each. Alright, so just be careful. That is the cost for 10 kilograms. So we just need to divide that by 10 kilograms so that we get the cost per kilogram. So for one kilogram of chocolate chips, we have a packaging cost of 5 rand. Okay, so that deals with packaging. Then we have variable conversion costs. And the variable conversion costs will be relevant because remember guys, variable costs remain constant per unit, but they increase in total. So if the candy division now needs to produce chocolate chips, then their variable costs are going to increase. So we definitely need to take this into account in the calculation. Now remember, your variable costs vary with labor hours and also with machine hours. So the portion that varies with direct labor hours is 50 rand per hour, and the portion that varies with machine hours is 5 rand per machine hour. And we were also specifically told that in order to make one kilogram of chocolate chips, it will require 0 0.5 direct labor hours and one machine hour. Alright, then for the fixed conversion costs. Remember guys, the nature of a fixed cost is the cost in total does not change depending on the number of units produced. So it doesn't matter whether the candy division produces the chocolate chips or not, that fixed cost in total is not going to change. So there's no relevant portion to take into account in our calculation. The only time you would take these fixed conversion costs into account in the calculation is if you were specifically told that the fixed conversion costs are going to increase if the candy division manufactures the chocolate chips. And then you would only take that increase or the incremental portion into account in the calculation. But we haven't been told that the fixed costs are going to increase if the candy division manufactures the chocolate chips. We don't have an incremental portion. The fixed cost remains unchanged, so it's not relevant. So that deals with all of the product costs. Don't forget about the period costs that we were given over here. So first we have fixed administrative and marketing expenses. So once again, guys, this is a fixed cost. The cost in total will not change if the candy division now decides to manufacture chocolate chips. So regardless of whether they manufacture the chocolate chips or not, the fixed cost in total remains unchanged and it's therefore not relevant. Then for the selling costs, please remember that you were told in the required to assume that there are no selling costs on internal transfers.
All right, so we have now considered all costs, and we can calculate a total over here. All right, so it costs Sweet Treats 202 Rand per kilogram to purchase the chocolate chips from an external supplier. If the chocolate chips are manufactured internally, it will cost Sweet Treats 155 Rand per kilogram. So we can see it's cheaper for them to manufacture the chocolate chips internally because they'll have a saving. And it's a saving of 47 Rand per kilogram. So we can see it is definitely cheaper for sweet treats to rather manufacture the chocolate chips internally instead of purchasing them from the external supplier. However, your calculation does not stop here. If you go back to the information provided in the scenario, I told you that the availability of milk chocolate is limited to 400,000 kilograms per annum. So we said when we read through the information provided in the scenario that this is a potential scarce resource. There is a risk that the candy division will not have enough milk chocolate available to produce everything that they would like to produce. So at this point in our calculation, we can't just conclude that the chocolate chips should be manufactured internally because the candy division might not have enough milk chocolate available to manufacture those chocolate chips internally. So we need to take our calculation a step further. Also, if you have a look at the required, this part of the required is for 16 marks. We haven't yet performed enough calculations to earn 16 marks. So what do we need to do next? We are faced with a situation where we have a potential constraint or a potential limiting factor. So as per our decision making lecture, where we have a potential constraint, we need to calculate whether a constraint actually exists. Just because the milk chocolate is limited to 400,000 kilograms per annum is not necessarily a problem. It's only a problem if 400,000 kilograms is not enough for the candy division to produce everything that they would like to produce. So, we need to calculate how many kilograms of milk chocolate the candy division needs in order to make everything that they would like to make. So for Brighties, we know that the cost per unit is 96 Rand, and we also know that the cost of milk chocolate is 120 Rand per kilogram. So if we take the 96 Rand and we divide by 120 Rand per kilogram, we can calculate the number of kilograms required to make one unit of Brighties. And we'll follow exactly the same logic for Giggles. Okay, so for Brighties, the unit cost is 96 Rand, and the cost of milk chocolate per kilogram is 120 Rand. So that gives us 0 0.8 kilograms per unit. To make one unit of Brighties, they need 0 0.8 kilograms of milk chocolate. Now, how many Brighties do they want to make in total? The annual demand is 350,000 units. So they would like to make 350,000 units. So that means they need 280,000 kilograms of milk chocolate. For giggles, the cost per unit is 84 rand. The cost of milk chocolate per kilogram is 120 Rand, so that gives us 0 0.7 kilograms per unit. So to make one unit of giggles, they need 0 0.7 kilograms of milk chocolate. 
They would like to make 280,000 units of giggles because that's what they can sell. So they need 196,000 kilograms of milk chocolate. Then for chocolate chips, We know that the biscuit division budgeted to produce 200,000 units. However, we also know from previous calculations that they actually produced 300,000 units. Remember, actual production was significantly higher than budgeted production. But remember, the reason for that was because of the CEO of Sweet Treats appearing on a popular reality TV cooking show, and that resulted in favorable publicity, causing a significant increase in sales volumes, and that's why actual production volumes were significantly higher than budgeted. However, you were also specifically told over here that sales volumes are expected to return to normal levels in the future. So when we are performing this calculation, we need to assume that the biscuit division is going to be producing 200,000 units per annum because that is their normal production level. The fact that they produced more in the current year is because of an abnormal situation that arose and that's not expected to happen again in the future. So if the biscuit division is going to produce 200,000 units per annum, how many chocolate chips do they require? We know, based on the standard information provided, in order to produce one unit, remember guys, one unit is two kilograms, and in order to produce one unit, they need to input one kilogram of chocolate chips into the production process. So, if they want to produce 200,000 units, they are going to have to input 200,000 kilograms of chocolate chips into the production process. So, if the biscuit division does not purchase the chocolate chips from an external supplier, but instead the chocolate chips are made by the candy division, the candy division is going to have to manufacture 200,000 kilograms of chocolate chips for the biscuit division, so that the biscuit division is able to manufacture 200,000 units. We also know that one kilogram of chocolate chips requires one kilogram of milk chocolate. So if the candy division needs to manufacture 200,000 kilograms of chocolate chips, they are going to need 200,000 kilograms of milk chocolate. All right, so if the biscuit division wants to manufacture 200,000 units, we know in order to make one unit, they need to input one kilogram of chocolate chips into the production process. So to manufacture 200,000 units, they're going to have to input 200,000 kilograms of chocolate chips into the production process. And if the chocolate chips are manufactured internally by the candy division, instead of being purchased from the external supplier, we know that in order to make one kilogram of chocolate chips, the candy division needs to input one kilogram of milk chocolate into the production process. So if the chocolate chips are manufactured internally, the candy division will require another 200,000 kilograms of milk chocolate. All right, so we can then calculate how much milk chocolate they require in total. And we can compare that to the milk chocolate that's available. And we can see that there is a shortage. So milk chocolate is a limiting factor, or it is a constraint. There is not enough milk chocolate available for the candy division to manufacture everything that they would like to manufacture.
Then remember, so that's always step one. We calculate whether a constraint actually exists. Now that we know that there is a constraint, a constraint actually exists, we then need to calculate the contribution per constraint. Okay, so because milk chocolate is the scarce resource, we are going to have to calculate the contribution per kilogram of milk chocolate. Remember, if the scarce resource is labor hours, you would calculate contribution per labor hour. If the scarce resource is machine hours, you would calculate contribution per machine hour. So in this case, because the scarce resource is milk chocolate, we need to calculate contribution per kilogram of milk chocolate. And we need to perform this calculation for each of the products. So this is a simple enough calculation. We start with contribution per unit. And we are going to convert that into a contribution per kilogram of milk chocolate. Now for brighties and giggles, you don't need to perform this calculation again because we already performed this calculation in part F of the required. If we go back to part F, we calculated the contribution per unit for brighties to be 65 Rand 50 and for giggles to be 82 Rand 20. So you can just bring that forward to your calculation over here. And let's just reference where that's coming from. So this comes from part F of the required. Then for chocolate chips, we can't calculate contribution for chocolate chips. Remember, how do we calculate contribution? It's sales minus variable costs. We don't have a selling price because Sweet Treats does not sell chocolate chips. Chocolate chips are used in the production of chocolate chip cookies which are sold. However, chocolate chips are not sold by Sweet Treats. So we don't have a selling price for chocolate chips and we can't calculate contribution for chocolate chips. However, we do know that if chocolate chips are manufactured internally instead of being purchased from the external supplier, the company will save 47 Rand per kilogram. So instead of using contribution in the calculation, we are going to use the saving in our calculation. So for now, I just want you to include this in the calculation. Once we've completed all of the calculations, I'll go through the logic. However, please just be careful. This saving of 47 Rand per kilogram is not the saving per kilogram of milk chocolate. This is the saving per kilogram of chocolate chips. We are now going to convert the contribution per unit and the saving per kilogram of chocolate chips into a contribution or saving per kilogram of milk chocolate. And we perform this calculation by dividing by the milk chocolate required per unit or per kilogram. And 
and we have already performed these calculations. For brighties, we know that they need 0 0.8 kilograms of milk chocolate to make one unit. For giggles, they need 0 0.7 kilograms of milk chocolate to make one unit. And we also know that if the candy division is going to be manufacturing the chocolate chips, they need one kilogram of milk chocolate in order to manufacture one kilogram of chocolate chips. Alright, so for each of the products, just take the contribution and divide by the milk chocolate that is required for each unit or per kilogram if we are looking at the chocolate chips. Okay, so let's make sense of what we've calculated over here. If milk chocolate is used to manufacture brighties, the candy division will make a contribution of 81 rand 88 for each kilogram of milk chocolate that is used in the production process. On the other hand, if milk chocolate is used to manufacture giggles, the candy division will make a contribution of 117 rand and 43 cents for each kilogram of milk chocolate that is used in the production process. However, we could not calculate the contribution for chocolate chips. Instead, we have the saving per kilogram for chocolate chips. And this tells us if milk chocolate is used to manufacture chocolate chips, sweet treats will save 47 rand per kilogram. So you can see that the contribution earned per kilogram for brighties and for giggles is more than the saving per kilogram if chocolate chips are manufactured internally. So when it comes to the ranking of these three products, because milk chocolate is a scarce resource, we need to make sure that it's used in such a way that profits are maximized. So the best product to make or the product that's going to maximize profits is giggles. The next best product is brighties and lastly chocolate chips. So although it's cheaper for sweet treats to manufacture the chocolate chips internally, we know that there's not enough material available for them to manufacture all three products. We also know that both brighties and giggles ranked higher than chocolate chips and there's not even enough milk chocolate available to manufacture all of the brighties and giggles that they would like to manufacture. So they definitely can't manufacture the chocolate chips internally. They need to make sure that they use the scarce resource in such a way that profits are maximized. So first they need to use the milk chocolate to manufacture giggles. Then whatever's left over will be used to manufacture brighties. And after that, there won't be anything left for chocolate chips. So let's conclude. 